ladies and gentlemen. We've just arrived here at uh, Shirley Avenue. We're going to be fishing on the point on the right here. There's been a lot of hound sharks around. So tonight the target species again is going to be hound sharks. I'm fishing with uh, two of the ASFN members here, uh, namely Jace. And of course, everybody knows the fish specialist here tonight. We're going to be testing out two new rods. And Mike Dyer is going to be using the new um, Elite. Four piece. Four piece. Uh, six, six ounce, eight ounce, what is six, it? Six to eight, yeah. Six to eight, 14 six to eight, foot. Yeah. I'll be using the, the 15 foot. Uh, it's a lovely travel rod and we'll show you as we're going through the show the rod, how it works and what it looks like. And yeah, we're just going to test it out on these lovely hounds tonight. Let's see if the dog fight can pick a fight with a hound. <laughs> see who wins. <laughs> as you can see, very compact, small rod, lovely for traveling purposes. This is the 15 foot, can you believe that's a 15 foot rod there? And there's the 14.6. And there's not much difference when you actually put the two together. Let me yeah. just do that quickly show you the difference in the size there we go not much difference in the size when you look at the two sitting together like no. i say the 14 foot and the the 15 uh the 14, 14 foot six, six and, and the, the 15, 15 foot, foot. Yeah. okay dyer <laughs> i want to be scientific no you just want to kill me yeah, everyone's in a rush an absolute flat <laughs> spin now to get a bait in the water just remember one thing when it comes to our rods that the spigots don't go all the way down and that's one thing people keep on asking us they come back and say to us but surely the spigot should go all the way it doesn't it's designed to wear in that and the more you use it the more it will eventually go down in time but that's what it's supposed to look like when it's joined together we'll just do it again here quickly oh, they're so small they're actually pulling out my hands you can see the length of the spigot goes in and that is it just line it up nicely down 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 and of course the base section this is my grinder my saltist grinder let's make sure he's lined up nicely the nice part about them when they come out they're all going to come out with bionic fingers already attached to them here we go dog fight's going to make those hound sharks woof tonight let's see what happens here we're just going to get everything ready our traces and everything because we've got a lovely light here so we're just going to put everything together before we even start fishing. I'm using the 40 pound J braid, chartreuse in color. I've got 200 pound uh, gator braid uh, leader that I'm putting on here. Hound sharks are very, very dirty fighters. They take you through the rocks all the time. So we're going for as heavy as possible here just to land them. We obviously don't have any gaffs with us. We don't believe in gaffing fish. Um, there we go, just go through, go through. I'm most probably going to be using a circle hook, a tuna circle 80, 90 pound surf line. There, there we go, there's my lovely knot. The rod's looking good. Let's just put that down. Let's go and have a look, see what I've got here in my bag of tricks. This is my tuna circle 90 pound surf line. Um, I'm going to be using a little dangle with it. It's a limited slide one as well. So we're just going to zoom that out. There we go, there we go, there we go. So there's the trace. Like I said, it's, it's a limited slide, so it's only going to go that far. If it actually gets down there, there we go. Uh, it's a, my normal power swivel, uh, number four power swivel. Now I'm looking for my leader. There's my leader. Okay, to tie that knot on, because I've already got a swivel and I can't do a pal palama knot, I'm just going to use a knot that I've been using for quite some time. Just do it over the box here so you guys can actually see it. So what you do is you go around your finger and back through the eye. So you've gone through the eye twice. Like that. The best way to do is just stick your finger in and wrap it around one, two, three, four times. Pull through and you just keep on pulling that end, holding on to the tag end. Okay. There we go, it's tight as can be. And old Jace is all ready there. I think he's all, also got a bait on already. He's so, so eager to go and fish. We're down here at Shelley Avenue. We're going to target some orange sharks. 
I'm going to go to buy Trace with a nice dingle, a little bit extra float and I'm fishing a limited slide that's a limited slide I'm going to allow it some movement so basically that's my Trace um, 80 pound mono maximum mono and some blood wire that's about it attached to my Dawa tournament and my dog fight and that's what's going to do the job tonight I brought the dog fight to catch hound sharks so it's a dog war tonight dog dog fight dog dog eat dog that's what we're up to tonight I got two of my other dogs here I got Ray Thompson the small dog and we got Mike Dyes the big dog uh, and we'll see which one of them uh, comes out tops uh, because we're catching our sharks I'm going to give them names we got uh, Ray is going to be the Chihuahua and, Ma and Mike Dyers is going to be the football. What are we calling the dice? Guys, it's looking so, so good here. We've got a flat sea. Uh, we've checked the power in the waves. You're looking less than 100. It's absolutely calm. Less than a meter swell. Um, Nice warm night, you'll see we've got the jackets on, but the action's gonna get hot, so probably gonna get those off. Uh, yeah, the hound shark, it's called, the uh, scientific name is Mustelus Mustelus. Nice easy one. Um, yeah, we're probably looking at fish that are sort of under 10 kilos, um, probably around that six kilo mark, and yeah, hopefully we get some, some over that. So we'll see, we've got some nice bait, and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay guys, what we got here is a, uh, a crimp protector. We do sell them at Kingfisher. Um, you'll see, uh, let me just glow it up with a glow light. With my headlight. You can see how much that is glowing. It's absolutely insane. So we're going to see if that, uh, that brings the fish in or chases them away. We do often have quite a lot of peckers around this side. So what we're going to use is a nice tough, tough bait, which is going to be our Oki leg as a base and then what we're going to do is put a little bit of flavor on the outside and that's going to be in the form of a mullet here. It's been netted these today, Ray actually went during his lunch time, thanks very much Ray, and uh, netted us some nice fresh mullet. So yeah, we're going to see how that goes. You want to keep the head for later because that's going to be a deadly bait, it's got a lot of oils in it. And then yeah, we'll just put this on, give it a little bit of a shake and uh, let's see how it goes. When the fish is biting you don't have time to eat. Just throw a couple of this in your mouth and it works magic. So from one rascal to another, <laughs> nothing better. So Mike, just explain to us please what you're doing here. So guys, as I mentioned there, we're using that Oki as just sort of a nice, sort of tasty little base there, but something that's tough that the pickers can't get off. And then what I've done is just, just done two cutlets of mullet. You can see there's still sand in them though from, uh, from earlier today. And uh, I'm going to put that on the outside just for a little bit of flavor. Now, I've done the Oki leg threaded down like that. So what happens is you're gonna sit like that on the bottom and then it's just gonna wave around like an octopus sitting in a gully um, with his tentacle out like that. And that hound shark's gonna come, he's gonna find it, gonna smell something tasty and he's gonna gobble it up. And now we've got an Ato uh, mustard soy there. And that should poke him very, very nicely. I've gone slightly different to Ray and Jace that I've gone a J-hook, but so uh, we'll just see what, uh, what happens there. But the gut's the most important bit. And they're just on the outside. Basically what we're looking at here is Jace and Dyer have basically decided on this area. It's a lot deeper as far as the hole goes. The waves are coming straight on. I've then opted for further towards the beach there. There's a little bit more rolling white water. Whether it's a good choice or not, I don't know. I'm just spinning away from them. There's more water, there's more of a current going that side. Um, whether I'm making the right choice or not, we'll only see once we throw a bait in the water. On my way to where I'm going to be fishing, I've noticed in all the pools, obviously on the high tide, the weed has come in. There's been a lot of weed down here. You can actually smell it, it's uh, rotting. I just hope this doesn't sit in front where I'm looking at. We Mike and MR is a deeper hole. It definitely looks a lot better. So we're gonna have a look see what the difference is. As you can see, 
in the afternoon, it's got a lot bigger surge, bigger water in it than we mark in them are. So I'm really considering actually going back to where they are here. What I'm using for bait, at can octopus that we get. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to be using mullet. Um, Di and them are definitely going to be using some fresh mozzies, some mackerel, stuff like that. I'm going to stick to more natural baits, hockey. So I know the hound sharks are like octopus. I'm just cleaning the hockey off. Um, I'm going to be using a mullet. And I don't know if you saw Mike's trace, he had a very nice little glow tube on it. Instead of using a glow stick, he's using a glow tube. I'll just show you what I've done to mine just to change it up a little bit um, and just give you a good idea on how it actually glows. Chuck your hammer quickly and just soften it up a bit. This is the heat shrink that I'm using. It glows in the dark. There's a little bit over there. And all I'm going to do is just cotton it up around this area here of my dangle. So let's just do this first. I've got a nice mullet. They can fall the scales. Dyer's already had a bite already. <laughs> He's already been eaten. Can you believe it? I'm going to take the mullet head through there. Through there. Like that. And then I'm going to cotton it up. And I'm going to pack up from here and go to where he is. Or where he was actually fishing. You see this here? Don't like that part. And I'm just going to wrap it around. And that's basically my bait. I'm going to hook my sinker on to there. That Oki legs are obviously going to go back on itself. Don't know if you can actually see this. If you turn the lights off on the camera, I want to see if you can actually see how this thing actually glows here, this heat shrink. There we go, guys. That makes a huge difference, and the blood is coming out of it. I'm going to go straight back to where Daya got that bite, because the water did look better there. It's now exactly half past eight. We'll see how long it takes to get a, a bite on this lovely four-piece uh, grinder of ours. Oh, through nicely, through far. Let's see, let's see how it pulls a fish. Mike Dyer threw his bait and it wasn't in the water five minutes and he got floorboarded by a hound shark. Unfortunately, I don't think he knows how to tie leaders on properly because his leader actually parted where it joined the braid. So the bulldog unfortunately hit too hard. <laughs> One zero! Uh, the conditions are looking good. Surprisingly nice, I must be honest. I was a little bit worried, you know, coming from a school of thought of one piece rods and everything, but technology has moved such a far way along. You're getting multiple piece rods and they're throwing just as well, they they curve just as well, they, they, the cast ability is exactly the same. I mean, this feels identical to my rod, which is the normal elite, the normal three piece. And uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that you can pack it down means you can sneak it in uh, when the missus says you're not allowed to go fishing. Not that we recommend it, but do it. And uh, yeah, no, cast very nicely. I've got the salt 8,000 on here, 50 pound uh, J braid. Indestructible combo. And uh, yeah, just put another bait. The first one got flawed. Um, missed the fish, unfortunately. And yeah, let's see what happens. It's uh, still early. Okay, here's the bite. from the hound shark they're definitely eating the mullet but the hook was covering the actual circle there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and go straight mullet Ray one zero zero Mike Dyer one zero Jace the Shih Tzu no bite remember I still got a hundred percent rate <laughs> okay Basically what I'm going to do with this one, exactly the same, 
set, I'm just going to have a mullet on. I'm just going to cut this head very small. See the nose. And that was, guys, 11 minutes for that bite. Maybe 10 minutes for that bite that I had. And I did give him quite a bit of time to actually feed there. It definitely was not a big hound at all. One of the smaller hounds that you get down here. Going thinner on my baits now. Soften it up a bit. Okay, there we go. Ready to go. Just getting changed here. Yeah? There's a chihuahua. He's going to show these guys how to catch a hound shark right now. There we go. Mullet mix. So we're going for the mixed masala. Bite seems to be closing. Give it some nice flavor. It's now 10 to 9. I threw about two minutes before Jace. So it's 10 to 9. We'll see how long it takes to get a bite here now. And Jace is zero for zero. <laughs> Ray is one zero. One zero. So the dog get the better of Ray. <laughs> the dog get the better of Mike Dyers. And you so, got no dog. <laughs> but I'm still wagging my tail. Is that a short bite? Okay, now I got him. Got him, Mr. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, boxing. He's around the rock. He's around the rock. Cut you off. That's a good fish. Okay. Cut me off. There we go, guys. 90 pound surf line. <laughs> Cut off through the rocks. That was a bigger fish than I thought. A hell of a lot stronger than I thought. But there's 90 pound. Cut off through the rocks. Put another hook, we'll see how it goes again. All I did was tie a J hook on now. I'm just gonna try a J hook. Get him going nicely. I think that's making a difference to what the other boys are doing. But that's it, just an old frigate. Nothing more. Just an old frigate. I'm going to see if we get a bite on that. Okay, I've taken my clothes off because I'm sweating already. Let's go and have a look see what happens. Okay, so basically getting changed now out of those clothes. It's only going 9 o'clock now. So that bite was 6 minutes. Had to get changed. I put on a bonnie head, trying for something softer. Also, just because my hook was cut off, the circle hook was cut off. I went onto a J hook. I just tied it straight on. Um, we'll see if they want a bigger, softer, bloodier bait this time than a small little mullet head that I had. But we know they're eating the mullet. They're definitely eating the mullet. But we'll see how we go. That, that fish, when you hook him, you think he's a baby fish, small fish. Come. Hell, that thing is strong. Stronger than Dyer, the dog, um, the bulldog there. Way stronger than him. Let's see. And Jace is quiet. Quiet, I say. The Shih Tzu is chop still, chop still. Wait. Uh, let's see who has the last laugh. <laughs> a little bit of something going on, yeah? Uh, feels like if it is a hound, it's a very, very small fish. We'll just give it a little bit of time, possibly to get the bait in its mouth. There we go. There we go. You guys, there you go. <laughs> it's what's called a fishtail barbel. One of two barbel species we get. Obviously the difference being the tail versus the eel tail, which got the long, thin, slimy tail. Yeah, he swallowed that bait deep inside. Let's see if we can get it out. Not a hound, but uh, at least the uh, the uh, bulldog has got a got a got a bite. So guys, with the fishtail barbel, what you really got to look out for is he's got very very sharp poisonous spines. One's at the tip of there. He's got a very very stiff fin on that top. Top of that fin over there doesn't look like it. They look very soft. Top of there, and obviously on the other side, he's got. Oh, let's see if he plays long. Nice soft lips for sort of rooting around. And this is where he gets his name from, these little barbels here. They're very, very sensitive. You can use them for 
feeling around in the rocks and things like that and actually feeling the prey move. Yeah. That's beautiful fish. And Jace, the Shih Tzu right. is going tzu. away with the bite. He's going tight. Yeah, we go. Yeah, we go. As you can see, a little hound, 100% uh, strike rate, one bite, one fish. Ray is 2-0, uh, Daya is 1-0, and he got himself a barbel. And the guys were laughing at me. I tell him, let's see who has the last laugh. Little fish, probably about 5 kilos. So get this hook out and get him back in the water. was about getting the hound shark and that was the target species we discussed this morning so come up here and target the hounds and it's exactly what I did so there we go guys as you can see Jace was using a circle hook in the mouth there and it's definitely not coming out but unfortunately Jace was fishing in the, the tank tree catching all the little pups and I'm hooking all the big fish uh, nice release there, a little hound shark. Um, I'm waiting for my buddies, uh, Bulldog and uh, Ray uh, Chihuahua to land a hound shark. Uh, if they can land one each, then job well done. I'm going to take a break. I've uh, got some uh, dinner, then I'm going to have some dinner. I'll give my buddies a chance to get a fish and then I'll come back. Yeah guys, I'm going to have dinner, that was tournament, and my dog fight, like we said, who let the dogs out? Woo! Well, you Woo! know, Jace Governor, let yeah. the dog back in the water. I had a weird bite earlier on, which I'm almost sure was a reggae bite. I'm not sure, a big bonnie bait, big smelly bait, maybe a mullet, I don't know. A big bait. I'll see if it's not maybe a raggy around here. What I'm using, limited slide, big 13 nose um, circle lock, and we're gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna take some of the coating off here quickly. I don't know why, but I've got a funny feeling that it's raggies. And that's why I walked through my 90 pound Surf line, very weird, very weird. This is a seven ounce grapnel. I don't want it to move too much. There's an old dangle. Adding a bit of flotation on the side, yeah? Reggie bait ready to go. Very nice. There we go. This is what we came here for. 
to fight the dogs. The dogs, my boy. Lovely specimen, maybe 10 kilos. And these fish are extremely strong. No teeth, well, they've got like rasping teeth inside. Extremely strong for crushing purposes, but he loves a mullet. That's his favorite food. That's his favorite food. He can stay in the water, he doesn't need to move around too much. He can absolutely absorb the water through his gills and pump it out like a reggie does. Um, like I said, they're very hardy fish, very hardy sharks. Uh, as long as you try and release him away from where you're fishing, so he doesn't draw or pull the other fish with him, the other um, hound sharks with him. So what the guys do is they normally keep them in a pool behind them. When they finish fishing, they release them. So we just put our fish back as quickly as we can. We take our chances that we're going to catch a couple more. Okay guys, so uh, not the best session, but uh, quite a good one down here actually. Um, yeah, we're standing in order here of catches from uh, to top dog down to uh, to bubble. <laughs> but yeah, we came here with uh, with the water being cold and a few reports of the hounds. We came here targeting them, and uh, yeah, okay. we caught them. We caught them. Uh, Jace, Ray, what do you what do you guys think? Yeah, guys, uh, awesome evening with uh, friends and the SFN team down here at Shelley Avenue in Ramsgate. Uh, I'm 100% strike rate. One bite, one fish landed. Uh, my buddy next to me, Mike uh, Barbel Dyer, <laughs> got himself a fishtail barbel. And top weight, Mr. Ray Thompson. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we called him a uh, Chihuahua, and he got his Chihuahua. So Ray Thompson had the last laugh. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Ray Townsend had the last bark. <laughs> what a nice sound, about 10 to 12 kilos. Yeah, yeah nice Ray? fish. Up to you. Yeah, guys, we came here for the hound sharks. Um, I think there were other fish around that were maybe scaring these uh, hound sharks away. Um, and I don't want to say that I think there were reggies here. But, but you're yeah, gonna say it. I'm going to say it. <laughs> there were reggies here. Um, we were undergunned, I think, for the ones that did bite early on. And the hound sharks coming on one, one, but they're very sporadic and they one fish bite and then there's nothing for half an hour, 45 minutes. And then another bite and then it's quiet again. So yeah, guys, it was a pleasant evening. It's always pleasant when you're with friends and mates and that, having fun. It's better than sitting at work, of course, as yeah. we all know. Uh, the rod definitely performs. This oh, is the four-piece um, grinder. Um, guys, definitely throws big baits. It pulls fish hard. And yeah, it's just all around good fun and games that we had here. It's lovely down this side. I can't wait to come down here when the sardines come around. Oh, that's going to be a ball. So yeah, yes. The model of the story is here. Small dog, don't come wag your tail. <laughs> Still beat you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Time to pack and go home. A long ah, drive back get to some food. from D Durban. Yeah, I think some Nando's will be good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> Lekker. Thanks for watching, guys. Up. Cheers.